From the lakes of northern Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. Wherever fish are biting, that's where we're gonna go. There's a lot of exciting country just waiting to be explored. So join us now in the great outdoor world of Virgil Ward. So I, I did a lot of praying. And I flipped the coin. I said, Lord, should I go after white bass or black bass that come up tails? That meant black bass. And I said, Lord, I want to win this tournament. The black bass, I, I, the black bass aren't hitting in muddy water. So I said, two out of three, two out of three times. And they came up tails every time. Now, if you don't think that con convincing, it was to me. So the next morning, they all roared off but me. And I started out, but put, put along. That's a guy, Illinois champion, turned around and looked at me and said, where are we going? I said, I don't know. <laughs> ah, I know he thought you're nuts. <laughs> and we went along about a quarter of a mile, and I looked down a, I looked down a cove. It was about a half mile long, and I saw some fish feeding. I thought, well, let's go down there and see. And that one spot, I caught my limit of black bass. I won four trophies in five days. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Not bad. We tried to, to produce a show that people would like. I mean, that was our aim, to produce as good a show as we possibly could. And we worked hard at it. And we started making uh, wooden lures. It uh, didn't uh, pay too well because it uh, took so many coats of paint to preserve the lure uh, that it, it cost so much that we couldn't make any profit on it, so we had to disc discard that. Later, we went to the feathered lures, long about the time that Bull Shoals was in its prime. And uh, Bill, my son Bill and I were down there fishing one time, and. We got into those big old slab-sided uh, bass, great big ones, and uh, we caught we caught almost our limit. And here came a boat, and a uh, guide was standing up in the back, and one of them was Judge Green from Springfield, Missouri. And uh, the judge, he just couldn't believe that uh, we'd caught that many big bass. He said he don't the largest bass he'd ever caught in his life was a four-pounder. He wondered what we was catching him on, and we showed him. He said, uh, well, would you sell us some? I said, well, we don't have but two or three, and Bill doesn't have his limit yet. And about that time, he caught his limit, sitting there looking at him, you know. <laughs> and uh, so we gave him three of the, uh, the feathered jigs. The next, we went on home, and the, those folks went on fishing. Judge Green called the next morning. They wanted to know if, uh, he said, I'd like to buy $25 worth of those, uh, uh, 25 of those jigs, 24, 25 of those jigs that you were catching all those fish on. And I said, well, we don't make them. We're in the appliance business. Uh, we're not making lures at the present time. I said, if I made you one of those jigs, it'd cost you a dollar a piece. Back then, a dollar was quite a little money for a jig, especially a, a lead head jig. And he said, send me 25. He said, it's making a difference for a dollar a piece or not. So I sent him 25. TV was young in those days. And uh, then along come Virgil with his uh, bait uh, company and a great fisherman. So I thought, wait a minute, I'm just a little duck and this fellow, this boy knows what he's talking about. So I got right a hold of his shirt tail and said, uh, let's talk about this fishing. He was teaching people to fish. Uh, a lot of his program was how to and, and of course a lot of where to also. And he made a significant contribution to the sport of fishing through his television show. And we were just happy that he did and happy to be a he part of it. Well, if I can get him. I, I tell you, these irrigation lakes have got some big, big bass in them if you can just catch them. We just hardly ever failed to catch fish. It, it, he, we went to some good places, of course, but uh, Virgil had the ability, he and Greg, to, uh, as the tournament fishermen say to pattern fish and to figure out a way to make it interesting and exciting. And uh, Every day is just a fun day to get up when you're with those people.
know, I remember the first time I met Virgil Ward. He was here in our hometown in Brainerd, Minnesota. He was in here doing a television shoot and he gave me a call at our office and said, hey, hey, can you help us find some walleyes on some of our local lakes? We want to promote walleye fishing in the state of Minnesota. Well, we went out on a lake that I had just recently been catching a lot of fish on called South Long, one of our area better walleye lakes. And in four hours time, we caught a whole bunch of fish, if I recall, pushing up to about seven pounds. A really good catch of fish. Virgil was impressed, packed his bags, headed back to Missouri or wherever else he was going for his next television shoot. After we finished that shoot, my brother Ron and I looked at each other and we said, hey, says, you know, we ought to start our own television show. So bingo, the Virgil lit the fire. A few days later, we went and bought a camera and we're in show business. <laughs> Throughout his life, there have been numerous honors. Virgil has been inducted into the Ozark Fisherman's Hall of Fame, the International Fishing Hall of Fame, and the National Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame. In 1975, Missouri's Governor Christopher S. Bond proclaimed October 19 as Virgil Ward Day. Governor Bond said, Virgil Ward, through his many efforts, has made an invaluable contribution to Missouri tourism and has made millions of Americans aware of the world of fishing. Well, if you wanted to reach fishermen in this country, uh, the Virgil Ward Show was uh, just about the best way to do that that I can think of. Uh, every fisherman in the country, or certainly many of them, watched his show every week and look forward to it very much like the, uh, the old American Sportsman series. Here's an interesting message from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Under shrubs or in a rock Championship fish. fishing often went Diamond beyond fish. entertainment to educate the viewers. Skin can be faded, yellow gray, blue gray, or dark gray, or even brownish color, depending upon the terrain. There are more than 40 species of the fearsome tribe in the United States. Oh, get out of the way. You're Western doing diamondback found only in the I'm Southwest I'm ranks as the number it. one bad tempered killer. Virgil had the unique ability to communicate to the average fisherman, the average person that wanted to learn to fish. And Virgil knew how, and he looked at it uh, as just a simple application of uh, equipment and know-how. That's what made championship fishing uh, uh, popular and so successful, is the content of the show and the people doing the show. You know, I know I'm speaking for many of us that are fortunate enough to make a living producing and doing television fishing shows when I salute you, Virgil Ward, for your contribution to this segment of the sport. You truly were a pioneer that made it possible for all of us. God bless you and thank you. There's a lot of exciting country just waiting to be explored. So join us now in the great out. If you're one who likes to get out and enjoy nature, my advice is to leave things like they were, like God intended them. But if we, if we don't turn a lot of them back, we're not going to have any fishing on these days. A lot of pressure on these lakes. <clears throat> one, 